Bonjour. Welcome to another video. You know, um, I got some silly people who's been watching some of the videos on my channel and find them to be funny. And they don't see the seriousness and the problem within the video. Within the video. They just find it funny. And they've been dropping comments on one of those videos. Yeah, it's like this, you know. You got people who who sub to my channel and find everything I said in these videos to be funny. And you got some who watch the videos on my channel and say that I have a speech problem. And my reading is not that great. And my speaking is not that great. And told me to keep trying. And God bless you. You got some people who just say. Just say, just, just say things just to be hateful. If I say something like, you know. I'm just stumbling and fumbling in my videos. Because, you know. It's because, you know, I'm scared. And I don't know what to say. And that's the problem. And some people just see see those videos and just, just bash me. Just to be mean. Just to be hateful. Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to give a big fuck you to all those people. And before I get into this video, I want to give a big fuck you to all the shitty people here in the United States that view the videos on this channel and dropping their and dropping their comments and bashing me and just ripping me apart and just pissing and shitting on me. I also want to give a big fuck you to shitty people in Canada who've been viewing the videos on my channel. You know, dropping comments. Then when I respond to them on their comments they never they never respond back it's like that in in it's like they're from the american viewers i also want to give a, also want to give a big fuck you to the people of the united kingdom some of them who watch my videos and sub to me and giving dislikes on on some of the videos that I did about the United Kingdom. So I'm going to give a big fuck you to them. Yeah. They're quiet and they're silent because, you know, I don't understand British culture. But you know what? I don't care. You know. I'm not going to get into it with a British person. I'm not going to yell and shout at them. I'm not going to say anything to them. I'm just going to keep to myself. If I'm ever in the United Kingdom, I'm not going to bother nobody. I'm going to keep to myself. When somebody asks me a question or talk to me, I'll say something. Yeah, um, there's this saying from someone from the UK saying that people in the northern part of, of England or the United Kingdom are friendly and sociable. And people in the southern part of the UK are rude and unfriendly and impolite. So I look at that. I don't care. And also, I don't care about the French hating, hating small talk and not responding to people who give small talk and they just ignore these people. Yeah, it's culture. <clears throat> and I really don't care. So, I'm not going to get mad and go crazy over these people. Okay, <clears throat> enough of that. Let me get into the, get into this video. The title of this video is The Problem with Some African Americans. Um I'm not going to bash all African Americans here in the US. I'm not going to bash them all. There's good and there's bad. 
I'm just going to go after the bad ones. And it's like this. I remember I started my first YouTube account back in 2016. And after I started this account, I've been watching a lot of videos with that account and leaving comments on videos on YouTube channels here on YouTube. This was when um, the algorithm was fair. Um, when I stumbled upon a, a, a YouTube channel that featured a black man from Houston giving the news, I stumbled upon this video and it was about an interracial couple living in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It, the wife was white and the father was black and they had and they had biracial children. Okay, um they were evicted from the apartment because the husband was black. And the person who did this was a racist white woman. <clears throat> so after I viewed this video, uh, sorry about that folks, I had to pause the camera. Uh, someone was coming in my house. Well anyway, um, after I viewed the video of the interracial couple, the white wife and the black husband, and their biracial children after I viewed that video I went into the comment section on that video and found a very racist comment from a fat black woman by the name of Tia loves ya Tia loves ya okay in Tia loves ya's comment she says this if I can remember it you need to stay away from those cave beasts those cave beasts aren't aren't no good. Apparently this black woman is calling <clears throat> this black man's wife, who is white, a cave beast. So yeah, apparently she's racist and she hates white people. And I see it when I went back and forth with her in the comments. So I don't remember what I said to her in the comments. I just it was basically a war. <clears throat> she was cursing. She was saying a lot of racist stuff. Saying that um black people are, are the superior race. They're the real superior race, and all white people are cave beast and and crackers and whatnot. Okay, I said some things that that um that just flew off her like they were nothing. You know, and after that, um, I just left her alone. So I went to some other videos, and I viewed a video of a guy, some some real estate agent. Um, he was wearing a suit and a butt and an unbuttoned um, dress shirt. It was about him talking about Beverly Hills, California. Okay. After I watched the video, I left a comment saying some nice things about the city. Saying, oh, I wish I want to live, I wish I can live there. It's really nice. It's a really nice place to live there, but you know. <laughs> you know, today, you know, I don't think like that anymore because, you know, Beverly Hills, California is shit. Now, I don't want to live there. Bunch of stuck up, snooty, rich people, fast paced assholes. Bunch of dumbass people, you know, just just attack someone over every little thing. Yeah, anyway, um, after I left that comment, that really nice comment, Tia loves ya and her friend start to troll me. And her friend dropped a comment next to my comment in that video about Beverly Hills, California. And she said this in a comment. That bitch is still barking. That bitch is still barking. 
shut the fuck up. And Tia loves you, comes in with her comment and says this. Are you still, are you still posting? Shut the hell up. Whatever she said. And I, and I said something bad to her, I ate her up. And we just went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It was pointless. Because I put her down because she was racist. And she put down some white people. And this is hilarious. She called me a cracker. And she thought I was white. And I told her she and I told her she was I told her that I was black. And she and she just started attacking me, telling me, oh, you're asleep, you need to wake up. Uh all black people are great and white people are crackers and, and cave beasts and all this stuff. And all and all of a sudden some religious woman starts coming in and saving Tia loves you and and just comforting her. Yeah. <laughs> and tell her, oh, don't don't do that. You you'll get in trouble or something like that. And Tia loves you left me alone. And when I commented to that woman who stopped Tia loves you for for furthering her verbal abuse and bullshit towards me. When I when I spoke to her, she ignored me. So apparently, you know, she was standing up for Tia Loves You and didn't give a damn about me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to start with these black people. You got black people here in the United States who are racist and they hate all white people. They hate all white people. You know, and I think some I think the you got the ones in the ghetto and this woman Tia loves you was ghetto and she called them all she called all white people cave beast and crackers. Which is just completely hilarious. <laughs> It's funny. Yeah. You, you got, you got Afro-Americans here in the United States who are racist. And they say some silly shit. I think one, I think one racist black person here on YouTube back in, um, I think back, back in 2017 when I, you know, I, when I started this account. I mean, the, the account that you're watching this video on, this YouTube channel. He says this is he says this to me in a comment when I when you know when I left a comment on um on Tia Loves You on this on this video that I viewed on my um previous old account that I started, which I shut down. I comment to him I comment to her again and told her how racist and ignorant she was. And some random black person that had that had an account name and the thumbnail had had like a had like a custom um lowrider car on it on it. And he said it call me a, a, a coon and a something like that. Coon K beast or some 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 silly shit. Yeah, you got yeah. Yeah, again, you know, I think some of these, I think some of these black people who are racist here in the United States are just fucking stupid, you know, and they're full of shit, and they are, and there are people who are full of hate that I don't want to have anything to do with, so, you know, I look at these people, and these people are a fucking joke, okay, all right, um, here's another story. I remember I went to a Walmart. Went to a Walmart. And I went shopping to buy some groceries there. You know, and when I bought some groceries there, I took the groceries to the checkout counter to check out. Okay, I stood, I stood in line behind this person. And the cashier was a young black girl or a young black woman. 
Okay, um, after the young black woman, you know, dealt with the person in front of me, you know, after ringing up their items, after, after she ringed up their items, and they went on their way, I came up to the checkout counter. She just, she didn't say a word or nothing. She didn't have a smile on her face or nothing. She just reined up my items. Then after she reined up on my items, she said nothing on how much of, how much all the items were. And when she added them up on the when she added them up on the cash register. I'm standing at the I'm standing at the checkout counter. She's standing there, not saying a word. She's just standing there. Just standing there and didn't say a word or nothing. And you know, if I, did, if I didn't say anything and she didn't say anything, we'd just be standing there for a long, long, long time. And she wasn't going to say a word. And come to find out, she didn't want to say anything because, you know, the scanner, you know, the display that was facing me told me the price. And that's why she didn't say anything to me. So... I paid for my things, she got she got my money, pressed the keys to open up the cash register drawer, put the money that I gave her into it, and gave me my change back. She didn't say thank you and come again or nothing. Didn't say a word. And she had this big, huge zombie look, look on her face. When she got done ringing up my things, she just got up and started walking away. I looked at her. She was like she was a zombie. It was weird. And the black guy at at the entrance of the door, you know, there's two entrances at this Walmart. An uh, entrance for um, you know, home goods and electronics and stuff, and the other side is for groceries, the the grocery store. Okay, I walked out of the grocery store. Well. I, when I walked out of the store through the grocery store entrance, this black guy looked at me and smiled and said this, How are you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. After that, I walked out of there. You know, I went there a lot, you know. You know, I, I dealt with um, cashiers, not saying anything. You know, paying for my things. You know, and, 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 you know, you got some white people who do the exact same thing because, you know, you know, because they were, because, you know, they were, they got this from, they got this from black people who worked there. And the Walmart that I worked, the Walmart that I, um, that I went to shop there, um, I used to work there. That Walmart is completely ghetto. As a lot of black people there, it, it was in the ghetto part of this city called Longview, Texas. You know, you know, I got mad and walked out of there because you know people were giving me crap there, yelling at me and telling me, "Come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go." While I was um doing um, while I was uploading trucks, unloading trucks, you know, helping people unloading trucks, unloading goods out of truck out of trucks in the warehouse. And bringing and bringing um, you know, bring them up goods that came out of that truck onto the sales floor for overnight stockers, and you know, I and I did that job too before I went to unloading trucks. Yeah, yeah, unload. Yeah, I worked in unloading, not unloading. I worked at um, the overnight stocking job from 10 p.m. to 7 in the morning. And on the truck unloading job, I worked from 4 p.m. to 1 in the morning with some people in those two jobs. Well, anyway, let me get, let me, anyway, I want to say this. Um, yeah. That Walmart that I used to work at, that I shopped at, which I'm not going to go back to anymore, is full of black people who lived in the ghetto. Some of the black people were okay, and some of them were completely ghetto. They were rude. They walked all over people. They they gave shit to each other. They gave they just ignored people and just shit on them and talked down to them. 
you know, have an attitude. You know, I got that shit from some black people there. And I was picked on, along with the white people there. And I was taken advantage of by Mexicans. But one Mexican guy who was who was super religious. Yeah, and they called him E-Man. Yeah. There was this black woman. She was an old black woman. And I can remember what she wore to work. Uh, she wore a t-shirt and a pair of um, Levi's jeans. And she was running around giving people crap. And she gave me crap. And I remember uh, I, uh, I was sick. And, you know, I, I called my boss, you know, because, you know, I want to stay home and get well. Okay, when I came back to work, this woman, this black woman, she had a loud mouth. She talked too fast. She has like ADHD. And she walked up to me and said this, Richard, where you been? Where you been? Huh? Where you been? I said, I was sick. What you at home for? What you were sick for? Um, um, you just saying that? You just, you just saying that you're sick because you, you don't want to come to work? You got a baby coming? And she was smiling when she was saying all this shit. And she was messing some white guy. Some white guy with glasses. A young white guy with glasses. And this white guy with, who wore eyeglasses. Excuse me. This white guy who wore eyeglasses that this loud mouth black woman was messing with. You know, he was he was a weirdo. And she just messed with him. And, a black, and, and this white guy just ignored him because, you know, he was a weirdo. Like, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you speak to him or give him crap or speak to him in a nice, polite manner. He'll just ignore you. And when, when he ignored that loud mouth black woman, she just laughed. <laughs> and I remember one day she came up to me and asked me a question. She was talking real fast by asking me a question. So when I opened my mouth, she interrupted me and kept talking, talking, and talking. And I got mad and said something to her and just walked away from her. And she said this, don't you get smart with me now. Don't you get smart with me now. Yeah. And I also want to add, um, you know, the story about uh, Martel DeCool's cousin, Brian Townsmanship, who was pestering... This guy's YouTube channel, pestering this guy on his on his YouTube channel, where this guy was, you know, doing having a comedy YouTube channel where he posted a video of himself doing an impersonation of Martel the Cool, you know, for funny purposes, you know, to be funny. I viewed the fi I viewed the video and I find it to be hilarious. Brian Townsmanship didn't find this funny at all, and told the guy this, and, you know, I said this in a previous video, he said this, hey, Martel the Cool is my cousin, delete the video now, and he said, he said, are you just making that video just clouding for views, and he was just pestering this, the owner of this YouTube channel, just pestering him, just pestering him, just pestering him, you know, and, yeah, <clears throat> and he just, he, he and he wasn't gonna stop until that video of of him of this guy doing an impersonation of Martel the Cool to be taken down. And I shit you not, this video is still up on this guy's channel. And Brian Townsmanship is just going absolutely crazy just to get this video, doing a lot of crazy stuff on, on this guy's channel, just to get this guy to take this video down. Take that video down, excuse me. Yeah, and then he rounded up his friends while the guy um posted a um a response video and after Brian Townsmanship and his friends viewed the video, they were dropping comments like, I think he's slow. He's wearing he's wearing an orange shirt and old man jeans. And and he won't take that video down because he's a punk. And he was making threats like this. Do you want to get shot? 
delete the video now. And so the guy who's the owner of the channel just just highlighted every every threatening comment from Brian Ta from Brian Townsmanship and his friends. And you know, yeah, the owner of the YouTube channel just highlighted every comment from Brian Townsmanship and his friends and reported them all to YouTube. For you know, um, for threat and harassment, YouTube took care of them. And Brian Townsmanship and his friends get this: they're going, they're going to this guy's YouTube channel, like I said in the previous video. They're going to his YouTube channel, this guy's YouTube channel, and just thumbing down every video on that YouTube channel, just to break the owner's spirit, just to break this guy into taking down that video of him being Martel the Cool and be Martel the Cool. You know, and being him and being funny. And all these people are black. Afro Americans. Then you got these um these super religious black women. Some are skinny, some are fat. And they'll like say lies to a young black man, you know, like for instance, you know, if he buys a new car and get and get rid of his old car, the woman will see this and says this to him. Why you get why you want to get a brand new car? You should hang on to that old car. Tell God to put a hex on that car so that car can last long. And defending a, a, a shitty girlfriend or a wife. And demonizing the guy and say that the guy needs to be good to that woman. He needs to be good to that woman. And if the guy, young guy, calls her out on her bullshit, she'll say some stuff like this. Bite me! Why is it that, you know, in every, uh, every f black family or, or any black group here in the U.S., why is it that you have... Black women just be the head of everything, just dictate everything, and just control everything. And they, and some of them who are shitty, and I think a lot of them are, who are no good. Some of them are good, some of them aren't. But the ones who aren't good, I'm, I'm just gonna say this, you know, it's like they just destroy, they just destroy everything, decimate everything within that black group and they and at the same time they scar and traumatize black men, young black boys and young black girls I won't say the young black boys I don't know about the young black girls they just traumatize the young black boys and, you know and you got some black men who do that you know they're you know, they run off and lead these black boys without a father. You know, and that's why they grow up and they get into all kinds of trouble and get thrown in prison. Yeah, like. Yeah, like, you know. You know, and, you know. I mean, why, why come the black man isn't in charge and the black woman is. I just don't get it. And this black woman is just destroying everything. I remember I worked at this TJ Maxx store. There was this black guy. By the name of um, Carrie. He's some black guy from the ghetto. We never talked to one another. And I spoke to him one day. I said, hi Carrie, how you doing? He just ignored me and just walked past me like I didn't exist. Then when I made a joke about, you know, like him and these two black people who, who come to work. I was just joking around. He says this. Oh, I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Apparently, you know, he just saying that because he don't want to have anything to do with me. And this is funny. 
I remember I, I used to drive a, uh, a a 1987 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme to work. He saw the car. You know, I just washed it and I cleaned it up. He saw the car and said, Oh, that's a nice car. Is that car for sale? I want to buy that car. I said, no, it's not for sale. That car is in prize mint condition. Yeah, it was a car that, you know, that my mom and dad bought at this car dealership in National City, California. Back in the 80s, late 80s, 1986. Um, yeah, bought it brand new there. And it had this car ever since. And, you know, my parents still have this car. You know, I gave the car back to them when I got another car. And this black guy who didn't want to speak to me, didn't want to have anything to do with me, all he cared about was my car. That's all he cared about. He didn't give a shit about me. All he cared about was the car that I drove around in. Then there was this black guy, this black dude. He was just stepping all over me, giving me shit because, you know, I was a janitor. Yeah. I remember um, he was complaining. He said this, I don't give a shit. I'm going to go outside and pull down my pants and piss on the sidewalk near this store. I said, if you do that, that's indecent exposure. You get arrested for that. And he said this, I don't give a shit. And going back to Carrie, the black guy at this, at this job that I used to work at. Carrie, yeah. He can do a British accent. And he did this British accent in front of him. He says something in a British accent. He, he, uh, he, he can, like, he can um, impersonate someone with a British accent. You know, I can't do that. And um, he did this to, to a black guy who has a disability. You know, these black people who are cool and have a lot of charisma and they can talk and they're funny, you know. It's like I don't have that. But, you know, I do. I mean, if you guys think I have a lot of charisma, I'm charismatic, I can talk, I'm funny. I mean, if you guys think that, just leave a comment. But you know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> you guys ain't going to say anything. You guys you guys just going to just watch this video. Or any video that I post. So, I don't, know, I don't know why I'm asking this. So, yeah. Not jealous. I just don't give a shit. Then you got these black men. Who, um get their girlfriends pregnant and when their girlfriends get pregnant and have and have the baby they give birth to the baby these men are nowhere to be seen they just leave these these leave these women and same thing goes with them being married you know they're married to the, they're married to their wives husband and wife relationship marriage Common law, um, spouse, when their wives have a child, they get up and split. They leave them hanging. They leave them behind. And you got these, if they're boys, if these newborn babies are boys, they grow up without a father. They get into so much trouble commit crimes, kill people, end up in prisons. And some of them have a mental illness. You know, and you got, and you know, yeah, I'm going to say this, you got a lot of people who have a mental illness and people with disabilities who are locked up in prisons today. And I believe they shouldn't be in these places at all. Oh, oh boy. And last but not least... The Uncle Toms. I hate these people with a passion. You know, you got these Uncle Toms in this country, you know. They they love white people and they hate their own people. 
and they'll vote for people like Donald Trump. They'll vote for these white racist people. And they'll say some stupid shit like, oh, oh, Donald Trump, you vote for Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a good man. He cares about us. And the Democrats don't care about us because, you know, if we vote Republican, we can think for ourselves. Well, <laughs> well, it doesn't matter who you vote for in this country. You ain't thinking for yourself, period. And... And do they know that, like, um, people like Donald Trump don't give a shit about them? Like, Donald Trump and his father, along with his father, were the owners of this apartment. And they were landlords. And they were doing some racist stuff to some black tenants there. Like, not fixing their plumbing and kicking them out for no reason. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And these stupid ass brain dead Uncle Tom black people are gonna vote gonna vote for people like that. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, um I heard about this black man who's a pastor of a church and he is a Trump supporter. He talked he was bragging about he loved Donald Trump so much. He was being an asshole, and he was just saying a lot of crap. Just running his mouth, being an ass. And one black preacher, like, heard about this. This black preacher was so mad at what this Trump-supporting black preacher was talking about. This preacher was going to kick his ass. It was almost going to be a fight at this church somewhere. Didn't know what church this is from, but but it was going to be a fight because this pastor just had it up to here with this Trump-supporting conservative black preacher. And the way I see it, that Trump-supporting black preacher is a Uncle Tom. Then you got one of them, you got some of them who are gun right activists. You know, <clears throat> they kiss the ass of white people and they align with the white people. You know, I call these Uncle Toms Oreo cookies. Uncle Toms Oreo cookies. You know, it's kind of funny. I remember someone on YouTube accused me of, of talking like a white person, asking me this. Why do you sound white? And I said, well, you know, I, I was educated by a teacher when I was a kid, a white school teacher. And she was tough, and she wanted me to learn something. She didn't care about my race or anything. She wanted me to learn something. And this guy said this to me. No, it just sounds like you just drifted drifted apart from the black race. You lost touch with the black race. And you're a grown man. That is no damn excuse for you being the way you are. Yeah, something like, something like that. I just, I look back on this, I just laugh my ass off. Yeah, and that guy was white, by the way. Yeah, these African Americans are garbage. They're shit. Yeah, throw in the ones who are angry and bitter and have an attitude and shit all over other people, taking their anger and frustration out on other people. Calling everybody the N word. You know, I was called the N word by a bunch of black people. It didn't feel great. I didn't like it. And you know, it was just I'm throwing this black guy who I went to school with. He had a loud mouth. He was talking a lot of shit. He was full of shit. And there was this white girl who had a crush on him who liked him because he was a quote unquote bad boy. And the guy was full of shit. And he was. 
accused me of eating sausage every morning before school and I actually ate a bowl of cereal. Yeah, I think I said that in a previous video. Yeah, and I also was picked on by black kids when I was going to school. I was picked on by black kids at a church that my sister and my mom went to. I was in my sister's car and they got in the car and they started rocking the car back and forth. So, um, yeah, yeah, these Afro-Americans are fucking shit. And I got some in my family, relatives on my mother's side of family, my father's side of family. Some of them never speak to me, never talk to me, never ask me how I was doing. Don't give a shit. And it's funny, I got an aunt. Who talks about, oh, Richard doesn't say anything. He never talks to me. Then when I talk to her, she ignores me. Doesn't say a word. She just spazzes out and just zones out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not trying to bash all black people. I'm just going after the I'm just going after the bad ones. You know, um, I'm nothing like those bad Afro-Americans. You know, I just look at these people. I think these people need to grow up, get a brain, and make a difference in society by lifting African-Americans up and making them stronger and better. I think all African-Americans in the U.S. need to stop treating each other like shit, stop killing each other in the ghetto for stupid stuff, like stepping on shoes and killing each other in the ghetto for four dollars and robbing each other and talking shit about each other and walking all over each other I think they all need to stop doing that shit start treating each other right because you know you know as Doc G would say and he made a video like this um, all we got is us that's all we have is us you know A part of me just hate these shitty black people and I just don't want to be around them. So, you know, there's no help for that. You know, I just wish that everybody just start, everybody, everybody who's black in America need to start treating each other right. But, you know, I don't see that happening. Stop looking down on each other. I think the Uncle Toms need to, need to, snap out of what they're doing and start relating to like how their people are and start treating their people right start caring about their people so um sorry about the video being long so that's all I gotta say in this video cheers and au revoir damn